We've been going through the book of 2 Kings in our nightly Bible reading time as a family. And uh, we've finished up. We're now in 1 Chronicles. But I wrote down a couple different passages, different verses and things in 2 Kings. Um, and, you know, the, the frustration there that as you're reading. And this king goes against the Lord. And then this one, he kind of comes back a little bit. But he doesn't remove the high places. And this one here, he destroys all the idols. He destroys the high places. And he does really good. And then his son turns out to be rotten. And, and you just see this thing. Uh, you know, kind of like politics here in America. <laughs> you get one that seems somewhat decent, and then they go back to being rotten and whatever else. And the ones that are decent aren't really decent. And frustrating. But uh, God put up with it for a while. Many generations removed from David, King David. Um, you see that real blessing, the sure mercies of David, the Bible talks about, where David messed up badly, but his heart was always pointed towards God. He always wanted to do those things that are pleasing in God's sight. And when he would mess up, he would, you know, God would punish him and, and he would repent and, and get right and everything. But after him came Solomon and he started out good and ended up very bad, marrying outlandish women and, and um, turning after their gods and, and the whole thing. You just think, why would he do that? And uh, But you see this thing. And for a long time, God put up with it. But there came a point in time where God said, no more. No more. It's time for this nation to be destroyed. And you know what? God has put up with America for a very long time. America has done some very evil things. We've been the world's worst bully ever. Uh, Nazi Germany, uh, there was a lot of things that they did that were bad, but uh, compared to America, not even close. Nazi Germany never used it, uh, depleted uranium on the battlefield. Um, Nazi Germany didn't do all the scheming and all the other stuff conniving and things that we have done and you know the fact is operation paperclip we brought nazi scientists here after the war Werner von braun uh with working with nasa he was a nazi scientist worked on the v2 rocket the v1 and the v2 rocket then we brought him here and had him work on rockets for us uh historical fact you can look into it um the fasci we have those in the was it the congress you know the they're in congress or whatever um you know, and you can see it. The symbols of fascism. Uh, the rods that's bundled together with the axe head on top. Uh, it's Nazi symbolism. Fascist symbolism. Um, so, oh, we're, we're not that bad. We're not as bad as Hitler. Oh, actually, we're many times worse. And um, God put up with it for a while. But uh, there comes a point in time where something very interesting happens. Let's read verse... 2 Kings chapter 23, verse 26. Notwithstanding, they're trying to do some good things for the Lord, trying to get kind of turned back and whatever else, but it says, Notwithstanding, the Lord turned not from the fierceness of his great wrath, wherewith his anger was kindled against Judah because of all the provocations that Manasseh had, uh, Manasseh, excuse me, had provoked him withal. The Lord turned not from the fierceness of his great wrath. Um, there a, comes a point in time when it's too late to repent. Oh, God's a God of love. God's always willing to forgive. God is just, he's ready for you today. That's not true. That is a lie of modern churchianity. Um, people that want your money. They aren't going to tell you that you can get to a place and a point in your life. The New Testament talks about it where it says about let not your heart be hardened. You can harden your heart. You can get to a, such, such a place of wickedness and sin where you've rejected the Lord and the Lord will say, okay, you're done. Oh, no, I don't believe that. I, I believe that we can just, you can do whatever you want and just you know, live your whole life wickedly. Wait till you're on your deathbed and then say, okay, what do I have to do here? Okay, believe that Jesus died for my sins. Pray this prayer. Okay, yeah, done. And then you get in. No, you don't. No, you don't. I don't believe in deathbed confessions unless it's somebody that's never heard the gospel, okay? But these people that have heard the gospel um, and they just reject and reject and reject and reject and then, oh, I'll get, I'll get right now. I knew a wicked old farmer years ago and just profane, vile, filthy man, uh, fornicated with Lord only knows how many women. And um, he got on his deathbed and, and uh, I need to be saved now. I want to be saved. And he knew the gospel. He rejected the gospel. 
all of his life. You say, you think he went to heaven? No, I don't. No, I don't. Uh, well, oh, that's just a terrible thing. I remember I talked about this years ago and people got upset at me and that's just an awful thing that you would refuse people being saved and whatever. Uh, well, the Bible talks about it. Um, it's not my opinion. And uh, I would rather, if I'm in error, I would rather err on the side of caution than go around telling people that you can just live this totally wicked life and then get saved later on, knowing the whole time that you need to be saved. Uh, I don't believe that you can do that. I mean, a Christian has said in the New Testament, it says that we're not to grieve the Holy Spirit, whereby we are sealed until the day of redemption, or sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, excuse me, in Ephesians. Well, if we can grieve the Holy Spirit, what about some lost person that just rejects Jesus Christ over and over again? And the Holy Spirit finally just says, no. And you see right now, a lot of people are still trying to say this whole thing of America can repent, whatever else. I don't think it can. Not, no, excuse me. Let me, let me rephrase that. I'm being too weak. America can't repent. America's finished as a nation. There's no way to bring it back. Well, you know, I think that we can, uh, you know, yeah, our dollar's, you know, kind of collapsing right now and, and the economy's really falling apart and we have 69% of Americans now are living paycheck to paycheck and, you know, we're 1.2 trillion in credit card debt, 1.8 trillion, I think, in student loan debt, um, 1.6, I think, in household debt. Uh, you know, people are spending 40% of their income on their mortgage. Uh, you know, all the different st numbers and statistics. I mean, you can see it. I mean, I see people all the time and they're, they're having to put everything on their credit card and all this stuff. People just drowning in debt. But, but God's blessing this nation. God's blessings upon it. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Um, we're uh, sending money, billions of bil and billions of dollars to Ukraine. Oh, uh, we're going to fight. We're going to, Ukraine's going to defeat Russia. They're losing. They're losing. Um, numbers from a, I've listened to military guys and things like that. There's numbers coming out, 300,000 plus dead Ukrainian soldiers. 300,000 plus dead in Ukraine. 60,000 amputations of those soldiers over there. They're being slaughtered by the Russians. But you see America and its pride is saying, uh, we're, we're for Ukraine, let's stand in solidarity with Ukraine. Why? What does it matter? Oh, that's right, because we're trying to set up NATO bases there in Ukraine and things right on the border of Russia, and Russia's just supposed to be okay with that. No, America can't win another war, another World War III. Again, I heard a, a colonel, retired colonel from the Army, I believe, Army colonel, and he said that 30% uh, of young men age 18 to 24, 30% would be available for combat. In other words, that they would be in good enough shape to go to combat. 30% of the young men in this nation would even qualify to be soldiers. Oh, and but we're strong, we're okay, and whatever else. No, we're not. It's too late. It's too late. Oh, I, I think that we could turn back. No, we can't. No, we can't. Um, all that you can do right now as a Christian, brethren, is just try to say, okay, I'm going to try to survive whatever's coming. And understand that right now, this government... And I mean all aspects of it, be it the military, the medical field, the whatever out there. Um, they're trying to lower the population numbers. Again, I proved that years ago. Military website came out and it said by 2025, there's going to be a 75% reduction in the population of America. 75% of people are supposed to be killed within the next year. Oh, well, you know, I don't know. It's, it's a conspiracy theory. You can't see it coming. You can't see the stores being looted and robbed. I can see it. Open your eyes up to what's really going on. What happens if the power goes out? What happens if the banking system collapses and everybody's savings is just gone? What happens if we have another 1929 style stock market crash? Hmm? Run on the banks? Oh, that's right. Uh, running on, run on the bank. So people come in. I haven't seen that yet. I haven't seen anybody, you know, lines of people trying to get their money out of the bank. What about people moving their 401k money out, putting it in money market accounts and cashing out of this and pulling their money out of that? I heard a thing here the other day. In the last year, 
there have been over $1 trillion taken out of banks in America. I wonder if that has something to do with the fact that the banks are closing. We've already lost, I think, what is it, six or something banks this year? And now Moody's downgraded the U.S. Treasury Department, I think, and uh, 10 other banks. We can't have a good credit rating and things like this. Destruction's here, you see? And what I'm saying to you is, if you're saved, you need to prepare for that. Prepare mentally. Make sure you're right with God. Make sure that there's no sins that you're holding on to. It's going to get rough. It's going to get very rough. Oh, what the... Uh, there could be some kind of spiritual awakening. If there is a spiritual awakening, there won't be. But if there is, if there would be, notwithstanding, the fierce wrath of God is going to come. And it doesn't matter what people do at this point in time. America has gone too far. We've boarded tens of millions of babies. I mean, you look at the, the whole birth control thing and whatever else, it goes into the hundreds of millions of babies. I mean, birth control, what is it? It's a form of... You know, it's an abortifactant when you take these pills. It kills, you know, the little baby that could be forming there. Hundreds of millions of little babies murdered in this nation. And God's just going to look the other way. God's just going to say, oh, you know, I'm just here ready for you to repent and whatever. No, he isn't. No, he isn't. Um, and I just, I need to stress this point because it's so very important you know, I remember there was this little funny song that they came out with. Uh, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. And they, they were saying it's beginning to look a lot like genocide. You know, and it says, uh, you know, the, I forget how the one line went, but it said, your government wants you dead. Um, they do. Okay. There are people in this system that have now gotten so radical, they're saying, let's sterilize children by giving them gender reassignment surgeries. Okay, then you're sterilizing them. They want you dead. Oh, hey, we should uh, promote the uh, LGBTQI plus thing or whatever. They want you dead. You understand? You get into that stuff, you are sterile. You won't produce. You cannot reproduce. <laughs> it's right there. Oh, well, you know, the, the government came out and there's an emergency and we all have to go to the special place to be relocated. Better not get on the bus. Um, hey, you know what? The government just passed a law that... Uh, we need to confiscate your firearms because there's been too many school shootings and there's too much violence out there, so we need to take away your guns. Uh, no, <laughs> because you see, every time governments take away guns, all throughout the 20th century, government takes away guns and a big slaughter comes after it. You better not give up your firearms. Oh, well, we don't have a chance going against the military and things. Oh, you have a better chance than you realize if you're well armed. Um, nonsense. I'll be talking about that in another video, but uh, you better not go along because right now there's murderers in this country and God is not going to protect this nation. There's a, we'll, we'll just get a good president in the next time. You know, Biden's ra rather bad and corrupt and whatever, but we're going to get a good president this next time. I know the Lord's going to do that for us. No, he isn't. No, he isn't. Well, if we could just get some, uh, a big movement going here in another Asbury revival. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. No. Um, right now we're in a raft, brethren. And that raft, we're going down and the water's starting to go like this and it's starting to get kind of rough. And you look up ahead and there's white water. There's big rocks sticking up, big sharp jagged rocks sticking up. You just say, well, I'll just kind of go like it. No, you hold on for dear life. And you don't get out of that raft for anything. Right? Um, you better say, okay, Lord, give me wisdom. And I am very serious about this. Give me wisdom how I can stay away from this stuff. Um, there's some kind of a thing declared in your area. I mean, obviously, if, it, if all the houses are burning down or something like going on, on down in Hawaii, uh, Maui or whatever it is, uh, yeah, you might want to leave. Uh, that's a situation where you better get out of there. Um, but uh, if it's some other kind of a thing that they say, oh, there's uh, the power is going to be out for a while, well, you better figure out how to survive. Um, because if you go with them to some relocation center, um, you're probably not going to be coming back. Uh, you might get loaded into a nice big building and, you know, that building gets filled with Zyklon B or something, um, like what happened in Nazi Germany. 
uh, you might get put onto a train car and shipped someplace or whatever else. Uh, that's coming, coming soon. Um, don't give up your firearms, okay? Um, I mean, it's it's up to you if you want to go and die and whatever else. Well, I can't stop you from doing that, but uh, me, no, um, not acceptable. Uh, I'm not going anywhere with these people that these sick monsters that want to kill us. I'm not doing it. I'm not going to let my wife and my son go either. Uh, and if it has to come to a survival situation where there's not a whole lot of food and we can't go to the grocery store anymore or whatever else. And yeah, and they could come out with some new pandemic as well. Um, let's just face that one as well that, you know, they could come out and say that there's this new thing. It's this ultra virus or something like this. And you have to make sure that you, um, go through all these different procedures and things and and um, we're going to have special sauce to put in you no 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 um, God's not going to turn from the fierceness of his wrath that's coming upon this very wicked nation that's not going to happen um, so uh, this lie that uh, God's always willing to forgive God's always willing to uh, forget what you've done and whatever uh, that's not true that is not true. That's why the Bible says now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. The Bible never says wait to be saved. Just hold off, wait for the right feeling, wait for the right time, make sure that you have your you know, retirement kind of oh, a nice padded you know, bunch of money there for your retirement. It could be gone like that, but the thing of retirement. But you know, make sure that you are out there in the world and you get good things and stuff. And, and then once you're gone, you don't have to work anymore. Then you can get saved because then you don't have to live it in front of people. And the Bible never says that. You better get saved now. Okay? If you have any brains left in your head and you're lost, you better understand what salvation is. And stay away from the church buildings and all that organized religious, you know, Satanism. Um, please, understand what the Bible teaches. You better do it. Because I would say it's, uh, we're in the very last, you know, prophetically, very last little bit of time here before things really fall apart. I would say this fall, if it goes till this fall, I think you're going to start to see things really uh, fall to pieces, really start coming down. Um, here, one week from today, the BRICS nations are meeting together to announce their new gold-backed currency and uh, that's not going to be good for the dollar because, again, understand that the finances, the dollar and everything else is weaponized. And um, it's been used, America has been using our dollar to destroy other nations. And now they're going to use theirs to destroy ours. So um, it's going to get chaotic. It's going to be a lot of fighting, a lot of death. Uh, you're about to see some really crazy stuff. But um, if you're saved... Just trust the Lord. Say, okay, Lord, I know that you can get me through this stuff. If you're lost and you say, I think I'm going to wait, you're not going to make it. And uh, so that's going to be it. Um, we'll see everybody in upcoming videos. And um, just amazing verse. That though the people turned with God, turned to God, notwithstanding, he did not repent of the great evil that he was going to do to them. So... That's where we're at right now in America. Make sure you're right with God.